tired of seeing all these amazing AI demos and unbelievable workflows, but when you go to use it, being AI, you either don't get the results you're looking for or get really frustrated because it comes out nothing like you want or expect it to be. Well, I see that happening all the time. And by the way, my name is Ryan Staley. I'm helping companies scale revenue significantly through implementing AI into their people so they can become superhuman. But today I'm going to share with you three core basic prompt engineering techniques that you could leverage specifically for business to help you grow yourself, your business, your time, your money, whatever you want. And it's really, really simple. And I'm going to give you three simple examples of how to make that happen by using ChatGPT, Gemini, Copilot or Claude, it doesn't matter the model, it's model agnostic. And I think you'd be blown away once I show you these. And so what I would equate this to is when I first started my business three and a half years ago, one of the things that I saw that blew my mind was that there would be people that would write a single post that would get a million, two million, three million views on LinkedIn, okay? And with that, I was both encouraged and discouraged at the same time. Part of the reason I saw what was possible, discouraged because no matter what I could do at that point, I got nowhere near that results. And there's a really simple reason why. Uh, I should say it's three reasons why, right? One is there's a lot of built up work done prior to that post where maybe they did nine months of audience building that I didn't know about. Maybe they're part of a community, so that's one. Two, they structured the con content in a format that was very specific and pleasing visually to the eye, right? And three, it was also structured by keywords and at the same time, copywriting principles that would induce people to read more, look at it, spend time on it, and be roped in and engaged with that, okay? So those were the reasons why they went viral. However, to the naked eye, it looks like, hey, it's not working. That's the same thing that happens when people are prompting within these large language models like ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini, and Copilot from Microsoft, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through these three examples. I have really good ones that I think you'll be blown away with. The first one, what we're gonna do is get into, and I'm gonna show you an example of this, is what you would call zero shot prompting, okay? So I don't use this per se. I'm gonna share my screen so you can see what I'm looking at here. Let me share my screen. And so what you're gonna see is zero shot prompting, effectively what that is is, that's basically just giving a command. And I think this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they try this. So you say, I am trying to grow my business. Please help me identify how to get more leads, right? So this is an example of zero shot prompting. And so what you're seeing here is I'm not giving it a lot to work with, right? I'm asking a request and then effectively what I'm doing is getting a response. Now this response, the thing that's interesting about it is it's still solid in terms of what it's recommending. However, it's not customized to me and it's not customized to my situation, my business type, anything that I'm doing, right? It's not customized to my problems. And so that's where a lot of this opportunity happens when you're looking at leveraging AI to solve your problems, okay? I'm gonna stop this. So it's going on and it's giving me some great actual details but this is kind of general advice. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a specific example of what it looks like when you are using this and it's not called zero shot, it's called multi-shot. I call it example prompting. So for, for anyone in business, a real simple way to remember is example prompting. All you need to do is, and as you can see my screen over here, is leverage, basically you have a prompt and I said, okay, this is an example. Um, I like the headline, basically three secrets about Grok that 99% missed. Please write five tweets about it. So this is all the prompt. Now, as you can see here, it gives examples, no hashtags, readability, every tweet consists of this. It says use the why, what, how, snap framework for creating a tweet. And what you can see here is it gives examples. The first part of the tweet is what you're talking about is less than nine words. Logically, it does this, how it does this. So it gives examples in terms of what I'm expecting for each single area, okay? Now, as you can see, as I went in there, I gave it, this is kind of like the customization aspect. So like what I wanted to talk about, Th these are the instructions with actual examples of what I expect the output to look like. Now, examples doesn't need to be word by word instructions. You could say, I want you to create a tweet that reflects the framework and the structure of this one, this one, and this one. And you can basically paste 
three tweets in there that you like the structure of. So you don't have to write it instructionally like this. You could just copy and paste it. So here's what's happening. Now what happens is it provides the three tweet, or I should say five tweets, unlocking Grok's first secret. It's about intuition, amplifies problem solving, pause, reflect, trust your gut, seek patterns, suddenly solutions appear clear. Okay, that's pretty solid as long as you just have it framed up the right way when you look at creating tweets. And so what you could do is create these at scale. And some of these are good that I would use and some of them are not, right? And you're gonna find that with AI, everything's not gonna be perfect every single time. And the reason why is because it's designed based on attention because it can't look at all the letters and instructions the same. So you have to call out specifically for it what to do and when to use it, all right? So that's the first one. The second example I am going to give you is more around, okay, let's, let's say we wanna use a persona prompting. So persona prompting, what that means is for, you're basically telling the AI, not from an example perspective of what we just show and say, I want you to write something like this, but I want you to act like a certain person. Right. And in this case, we're doing Elon Musk. So I want you to act like a certain person. I want you to act like Elon Musk. Okay. So we're not, this is all in ChatGPT, obviously, but it works across Gemini, Copilot, Claude, the LLMs all do have different strengths and weaknesses, as you can see, based on some of the stuff that we're going to go through. And if you watch my other videos, but the cool thing about it is you could act it to act like a, a specific person. You could act it, ask it to act like a title, like a CFO, a CIO, a chief revenue officer, a CEO, you could ask, act it to ask, ask it to act like, wow, I, I can't, I'm a little tongue tied here. It's my first video back. I was on vacation for a few weeks. So as you can tell, I'm a little bit off in terms of my delivery, but thanks for your patience. So anyways, you could act like an individual, a role or title, or if you want to stack it, you have the role and the title with the experience level. So for example, a CEO with 20 years experience in startups um, that has created publicly traded companies, right? That's an example, but let's get back to the task at hand. So as you can see here, I want you to act like this person and Elon Musk is, is a genius at first principles. And so what we're doing is giving first principles thinking, right? Next one is for context. I'm saying, okay, I have a sales consulting company, right? So this was like a fill in the blank that I had that I already filled out. Um, and then basically what you got to say is, What's the problem or situation? So this is all built out. So I have to give it context in terms of who I am and what my problem is. Let's say I don't have enough leads from social media, even though I misspelled from, my fat fingered it. And this is break down the situation of first principles. And it gives an example and understanding of what first principles is. So like you can see, I use a combination of what we just went through the first time where it's an example, right? With the persona. Right, so we have persona and example together and that's what this is, okay? So this is kind of like the second phase of it. Now look at the result. As you could see here, it's really cool because it the thing that I love about it is like the assumption is that more posts on social media directly correlate to more leads. Like I can't tell you how many businesses think the answer to growing their business is more leads. Whereas sometimes more leads can actually make your business shrink. It's better leads, it's more important, right? And so basically it starts to question me on that thought. Um, and it's also starting to question me that even social media is the primary most effective channel for my target demographic, which is really good insight to think about because if you are selling to executives, some of them might be on there, some of them might not. It depends on the channel, it depends on all those details, okay? So then it gets into underlying uh, evidence-based components and then basically novel solutions assembly, right? Which I don't like, I mean, I don't know what that is, right? Um, but now that I'm looking at this, I'm starting to understand it deeper, right? And have an understanding, but I'm not an expert on first principles thinking. I think by nature, I do kind of think like this in a lot of areas, but I've never heard of novel solutions assembly. Like, what does that even mean, right? So as we go through that step number two, so first of all, we have zero shot, which is, I think, the, that's almost like using Google and asking a question, right? Then we went into example prompting, like how to use an example. Now we're stacking example prompting and persona prompting, right? So the next one I'm gonna go into, this is one of my favorites that I think you get the best possible results on if you are doing prompt engineering for business. And once again, like I said, it doesn't matter if it's Microsoft Copilot, it doesn't matter if it's Claude, it doesn't matter if it's Gemini, it doesn't matter if it's ChatGPT by OpenAI. All of these examples work across function and even open source models as well. Okay, so we're going to get on the last one, and this is iterative prompting. Okay, and there's some really cool things that we did here, and I'm going to start all the way at the top so you can see this. 
So the way I look at iterative prompting is that's you start with an area and like, this is what I love. Like I, I do typos all the time. I kind of suck at typing. So like you could use the, and activate the verbal cue as well, where you do it all audibly, but I still typed it. And as you can see, I have typos, but basically the iterative prompting and what that's doing is you're taking an initial answer and then you keep drilling deeper on it, right? You keep drilling deeper. And when I've gotten really amazing results, this is literally my favorite way to use it. So you heard it here first, but as you can see here, I said, okay, please create a 12 month go to market plan for building a sales motion. So go to market effectively means like, how do we approach it from everything? What's the strategy, the pricing, um, the motion, right? This one, it's focused specifically on a sales motion because that's what I identified. And then I also said, okay, what's my average contract value is 30,000. Um, let's say I'm bootstrapped and I'm a solo founder with high experience and expertise in enterprise sales. Okay. So what it starts to do is create this out. Okay. Now it, it goes through this and it identifies market analysis positioning, right? Product alignment, sales strategy, implementation, optimization, and scaling. Okay. So this is pretty good, right? This, however, this is a start. As I saw that, I'm like, oh shoot, I didn't give it a time frame. You know, I said 12 month go to market, but I didn't say what the result I wanted was, right? So I'm like, okay, let me add that, right? So as you can see here, all right, sorry, please rewrite it. My goal is to reach 2 million in revenue in 12 months. Please factor in staffing and resources needed and ideal capital, right? That's the other one. So as we do this, we now have this area, right? So it's getting much tighter because I'm giving it the exact outcomes. So strategic planning, infrastructure and team building, sales execution, optimization, scaling and growth. And there's details beneath each one of those, right? And then we even have key metrics and financials, all right? So the interesting thing is it broke down 67 contracts at this amount, we'll hit the 2 million, staffing costs, cost X amount, which I thought was pretty good. And then capital, like how much you need to invest to do this, right? The interesting thing is it's saying, hey, you should have 300 to 500 K capital reserve, which is pretty significant. You're building a business, but to get to 2 million in 12 months is a very aggressive goal to do, especially if you're starting from zero and you don't have any funding, all right? So, so one of the things that's interesting now is I said, okay, now identify the most common mistakes that to avoid that many make, right? Now, once again, I also had a typo there and I, I misspelled it. So in doing this, now it identifies all of the most common mistakes and there's, there's like 10 of them, right? Everything from neglecting, you know, market fit and adequate financial planning. Now, here's where this gets kind of wild. One of the things that I did here is I said, now create a visual of the of a mistake tree so it could be on my mind. Please use, and then I did the at symbol, so the at symbol, and then I use the whimsical GPT. Okay, so I use at and then whimsical. And so what it does is it calls on this GPT, which is specifically designed to create diagrams. Now check this out. What? Look at that. So basically we went from, okay, this is what I want. Okay. I didn't give you all the right instructions and I refined it. Now, what are the biggest problems now create a visual of this? So I'll remember it. Right. So basically created this visual in terms of a mistake tree on what to avoid. I thought this was pretty cool because this is something that, you know, would take a really long time to process and create. However, we were able to do it all within a very short period of time. And that's an example of how powerful this prompting can be to understand how to use it. So just to recap and put a bow on this, right? To, to, to finalize it for you, there's three areas, right? There's example prompting, which give it an example. This is what I want. Here are examples of what I want, whether it's descriptive or you actually copy and paste examples, right? So number two is persona prompting. I want you to act like this individual, or I want you to act like this job title or this job title with this level of experience, right? So that's number two. Number three is, okay, iterative prompting, right? How do we take something as a starting point and keep building, building, building on top of it till we have a beautiful piece of work of art, right? And so these are three areas that I think will get you started with prompt engineering for business. Once again, you don't need to code at all. And as you start to use this, more and more ideas are gonna be on your mind to see what's possible and how good this could be because one of the things about AI, it's not a straight line like most SaaS products. It's like this in terms of what it could do. It could do amazing things like this, but sometimes it might have a problem with simple math, right? 
And that's where you can really take things to the next level and be different than everybody else and blow things up for you, yourself, your company. And so appreciate you joining me today. I hope this was helpful. Feel free to check on the, click on the next video below. Um, I have a whole library of this I'm creating to help with AI literacy, specifically for those that are trying to use it with work, make their lives better, free up time, and at the same time, become superhuman in the process. So thanks for joining me today. I'll see you on the next video.